Hey everyone, I know it's been a long time since I uploaded a video last, but hopefully I can start doing it more regularly now. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by showing you what the end state would look like, especially as we begin on a brand new C++ project. Um, and then afterwards, I'll go into each of the different components and plugins required to, to make that happen. So this is going to be a short extension video. Um, I already did a video about Lua-based configuration for NeoVim, including TreeSitter, LSP, and completions. Uh, and what I'm going to focus on, um, and you can watch, watch those videos um, over on my YouTube channel, and what I'm going to focus on in this video specifically is how we can configure those for C++ development and how some of our older setting up NeoVim for C++ video, some of those concepts still apply. We're still going to use some of those plugins like the CMake plugin. Um, and so without further ado, let's just get into it. So we start with an empty folder here, and we're going to create a basic CMake C++ project. So everything starts with a CMake list.txt file. And I have a snippet here for a basic setup which basically expects a main.cpp file and compiles it into uh, a hello executable. Um, and we're going to open the tree view, which is enabled by NeoVim tree toggle. And I'll talk about the configuration for all this at the end, near the end of the video. I just want to get through like the full example first. Um, okay, so right now there's just a CMA list file. We need a, the next thing we need is a main.cpp file. Okay, so we're just going to create a very basic main.cpp file, which just prints out hello world. And now we're going to use our CMake plugin to trigger a CMake build and then a make on the generated CMake files. And you can see that this built our target hello. Uh, and we can run it in our integrated terminal emulator. Um, so debug hello and it prints out hello world. And this is now a basic C++ Hello World program. But you might ask, where's the, where's the LSP? Where's the completions? And where's the full ID experience for you? So we're going to quit it. And now you'll notice that it generated a compile underscore commands JSON file. Um, and this is based on our configuration. And I'll talk about this in a second. But the next time we open main.cpp, um, completions will actually start to work here. So and error handling will start to work. Um, you'll notice if I just type in something, it calls out the fact that it's an error. And I can now create a function here, let's say in blah, and this returns four, and we can actually, you'll notice that as I start typing, it gen shows me the auto completion, which is that there is a function blah that returns an int, and this is generated from the LSP information. Now I can also just jump to the definition, and let's say I add a comment here, blah is a function, right? And this time, if I hit Shift K, um, it'll show me uh, a blurb text, which includes the comment about the function. I also have folding support, which is nice. Um, let's do something a little bit more complicated though. Um, hello world is boring. We're going to use telescope to reopen our CMake file. We could have just opened it manually using our NeoVim tree toggle, but telescope is much faster. I can just open files, switch between these files very, very simply. And this is usually my preferred method of switching between files in a project. We already have installed SFML on our system, and this is an Arch-based system, so I basically just did something like yay-s SFML. And uh, if you're on a Mac OS system, you can also do brew install uh, SFML, and both of these will work. But once you have that, you can just find package here. And find package will find it, and it, the required tag will throw an error in the CMake generation if it cannot find it. And I talk more about this in my broader CMake video, so I'm not going to dive too deeply into CMake specifics. But once I have it, um, I can actually tar use target link libraries and link the SFML dash. I just want to use the graphics thing, and I'll link it to SFML. So now what we can do is let's go back to let's go back to our main site CPP file, and let's just get rid of everything. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to take the um, drawing 2D stuff SFML example. And now we've copied and pasted this over. So what happens if we generate the CMake again and build it and build the executable? So can we run it? Yes, we can. It just creates a blank screen with my window. And let's just make sure that this is uh, working properly. And we're going to use something like green here, build again, uh, and run it again. And it prints out a green background. So it's working flawlessly. Now, what does the LSP here give us for when we're dealing with external libraries? Uh, you can see that I can do Shift K to, and these are custom key maps that I'll, I'll dive into in a second. Uh, I can do Shift K to see the um, information about the classes. I can jump to the definition of where window is defined. And I can even, I, if I want to see other functions on the window variable, on the window instance, um, I can see that it offers me all these other functions that I can actually call. So it's offering a full C++ ID like experience, and this is exactly what we wanted. So then the next step is to take a look at what changes we made to our configuration that we defined here in our basic NeoVim Lua configuration, including Treasure LSP, to accomplish this. And you'll be surprised by how minimal the changes actually are. By the way, one final thing I want to talk about is um, the key bindings here. Uh, you'll notice that my movement keys are not HAKL, and that's because I switched to uh, a Colmac layout instead of the query layout. So I'll do a separate video on that uh, when I talk about that. So let's take a look at all the plugins and configuration that was done to enable this. And I'm going to assume that you're familiar with my basic Lua based setup, um, and we're going to go from there. Usually when I do these videos, I tend to start from scratch, but due to the number of plugins involved here, uh, I've just continued to extend this over time. And so I'm just going to talk about the plugins that are relevant to this video itself. Treasitter, it's one of the necessary ones. Um, fold cycle is a cool uh, is a cool plugin that lets me um, cycle through folds like fold and unfold with just the tab command, which is super useful. I'll talk about folding in a separate video as well in more detail. Um, theme, 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 float term. This is the floating terminal. I did a video on that especially as well. Um, I have it bound now to command F and I have it to the bottom of the screen. Um, I found the full floating a bit too distracting. Um, skipping through more plugins. Um, Trouble is an interesting one. I'll do a separate video on it. I didn't demo it here. Neovim tree. This is the, the tree plugin I used. With I have it bound to uh, my leader T. My leader in this case is the, is the single quote. So if I go in here, you can see that uh, leader T will toggle it. And Telescope, of course, I have a separate video on Telescope as well. Um, and I'm using this to find files and switch between files and buffers. I'm going to skip through some of these other files, skipping, skipping, uh, and NeoVim LSP config and NeoVim LSP installer, which I talked about in my basic NeoVim LSP configuration video. Um, I do not use completion.nvim and I replaced that with COQ. Uh, I found it to be a much faster completion alternative. And skipping to the other ones, um, vim-cmake. I talk about it a little bit in this video, New Vim for C++ Part 2, in which I talk about CMake, gtest, file explorer, etc. I think that's still useful even though we're not using um, COC like in that video. Um, I talk about build integration, which is where I use this vim-cmake, oh, let me make this bigger, vim-cmake file, uh, vim-cmake plugin, and I also talk about vim-gtest, gtest, which I haven't, uh, I haven't talked about in this video yet. And that's basically it as far as plugins go. Um, so the important part here is some plugin key maps I used. Um, I use leader CG to generate, build, and these are the CMake plugin. Um, these are some of the CMake ones. I use leader FF, and these are some common telescope ones to find files to grep and buffers. Um, and these are some of the basic um, Vim LSP configurations that I've set up. Um, to jump to a definition, to jump to a declaration, to jump to the implementation, 
Um, Shift K will do the hover command, which will show the text. Um, you can do code actions, you can do renames, and all those things continue to work um, as we expect them to. Now onto the LSP setup. Um, a lot of this is common stuff that I talked about in my basic NeoVim LSP setup. The one thing I changed is inside my LSP setup, I require COQ. And when I actually have to do the configuration for the server setup, all I have to do is wrap the OPTS in coq.lsp underscore insurer underscore capabilities. And that makes it so that um, the LSP setup continues to work. Um, finally, I use the CMake link compile commands. This is again something I talked about in my vim cmake thing, um, where we can use these things to ensure that the CMake will generate the compile commands that our LSP will utilize. And finally, um, after that, all you have to do is LSP install CCLS or CLangD, depending on which language server you're more comfortable with. So if I check my LSP install info, you can see that I have CCLS and Lua installed. Um, one final thing was the vim.cmd um, and cock now. This will only start working after you run coq depths, um, and which will confirm that your dependencies for coq are working as, well, as expected. Uh, and once you do that, you can run coq now on when you open up a buffer, and it'll completion will start working. I just put it at the bottom of my NeoVim configuration so that it runs for every buffer and the dash s will silence the, the message. And if I open up my main.cpp file here again, um, if I do lsp info, it'll tell me that ccls is currently active on this. And of course it is. We can see that error handling completely works and I can do things like rename this. So window I want to rename to wnd maybe and it'll rename it. Um, and one important thing is that these all also work across files as well. Because of the fact that CMake will generate this compile underscore commands.json, so long as CMake understands the link between your files, your LSP will also continue to understand that. Oh, one final thing uh, I forgot to mention. Um, if you remember how I used the snippet here, I used cock snips for this. So if I do cock snips edit on a file, it'll take me to the snip file for that um, file type. So in this case, the snip file for CMake, uh, it'll take me to that. And you can see that I have the CMake base um, snippet here. And I can do the same thing for C++ files as well. So cock snips edit, um, and I have something like blah. Uh, so if I do something like, you can see that there's a snippet here and it'll do the same thing. And the final thing I want to mention before I sign off is all this information will be available on codevian.github.io and you can just click on under C++ development, the top one, C++ and NeoVim LSP ID and that'll have all the information um, that was shown in this video. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe.